Hello everyone, I'm Duke James. This is a new campaign in EU4 Mew in Texas, this time as Georgia. I did a uh, Crusader Kings 2 Let's Play as Georgia, where I became a regional power and then I took over the Byzantine Empire by accident. I didn't mean to. I meant to uh, transfer that save to EU4 Vanilla. But that didn't happen because I actually got too powerful, so I didn't think it would be interesting to bring it to EU4 Vanilla because I would have been massive. I basically would have been just like an Orthodox Ottomans, except probably even more powerful than the Ottomans because of all the territory I had. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a Mew and Taxes Let's Play as Georgia. So... Kingdom of Georgia. In 1356, the Kingdom of Georgia is in a dire situation. The kingdom still stands after wars against the Timurids and the Karakianlu, but it is fatigued and torn by internal conflicts. Hoping to lessen the disruptive powers of regional nobles, Alexander I of Georgia abdicated in 1442. Well, it's uh, 1356, so... Uh, he made his sons co-rulers over the constituent parts of the kingdom. This way he secured the Bagriatoni dynasty is standing, but in practice it did not take long for this to accelerate the decline of the kingdom. As the Ottomans crush the Crusaders of Varna, <clears throat> Georgia is in all but name split between the powerful Bagriationi sons in Imereti and Tbilisi and the autonomous Atabegs of Samska. Yeah. Nailed it. Okay. Uh, religion, Orthodox. We're orthodox, we're monarchy, and there is an environment. Alright, so for this campaign, we're going to, I believe, my goal isn't actually rooted in any kind of a historical basis, because Georgia wasn't really large by any means. So, I think what we're going to do is conquer up here to around here, these three provinces, and then down to the, uh, this sea right here, and then over here, and then we're going to conquer Anatolia, probably these islands. So yeah, this area. So we're going to become Probably a world power, I imagine. At least a regional power. I think if we conquer Anatolia, we'll become a world power. And then I'm thinking we'll do uh, trade provinces to India, so that we can control that Indian trade. And then flow it over into the Aegean. Then we'll, in order to get trade power in the Black Sea, we'll take the uh, trade provinces in the Black Sea as well, so that we can transfer the Caucasus ducats to the Black Sea and then transfer that to the Aegean. All right. So our ruler is David the Fourth Bagriationi. He's a two three three, proud and calm. Our heir is Bagrat Bagrationi, who is actually older than us. He must be like a cousin or something. Cousin, uncle. He's a 445, so he's actually a lot better than us. And he's industrious. Production efficiency in rural goods produced a modifier. We are Georgian culture, which is Turco Byzantine, which actually includes. It includes Turkish? Wow, that's kind of weird. That seems weird to me. Let's see, we start with logistic ideas, which I would never choose under normal circumstances, so we might dump that. 
Georgian ideas, we are egalitarian family. Which gives years of nationalism, negative 10, number of accepted cultures, plus 1, diplo annexation costs, negative 10%, that's worthless to me, max absolutism, plus 5, global unrest, plus 2, and discipline, negative 1%. Bonus idea is, uh, end of the Silk Road, provincial trade power, provincial trade power modifier, plus 5%, I like that, that's good, Bagriatoni, dynasty, some yearly prestige, diplo rep, yearly legitimacy, chance of new heir, it's a mixed bag. Georgian isolation. Hostile core creation costs on us. It's pretty much worthless. Georgian protectorate. Fort defense income from vassals and vassal force limit contribution. That's alright if we're going to go vassals. I don't really like vassals. But I imagine I could probably grab a vassal in the north with that... Uh, White Horde territory that's practically worthless, that I don't want to hold myself. Saratsavo counties, stability increase interval, negative 5%. Admin tech cost, that's pretty good for that admin tech cost. And uh, manpower recovery speed, plus 10%. Those are our ideas. Don't really have any ideas, uh, missions. Just uh, colonial idea missions. Don't think we're going to colonize. We're not really in a position to colonize. I guess you could say we're going to colonize because I plan on conquering bits of India, but we're not really going to colonize, though. I guess it depends on if you want to interpret the uh, Indian possessions as colonies. All right, our rivals are the Retinids and Trebizond. And I was looking, we do have cores on Arminian and Suyenia territories. They're practically worthless, though. But that's probably going to be our first moves to try and get these cores back, just because it's the easiest. It's going to be a lot easier for me down the road if we keep Turkey from getting too powerful, so I'm going to try to ally the Empire of the Romans. I think an alliance with them might be enough to prevent the Ottomans from attacking them, or at the very least we can help them, help them out when they get into that war. So we're going to go ahead and improve relations with the Empire of the Romans. Then we're going to offer an alliance to... there's only two options right now. So we're going to ally Circassia. We're going to go default settings. I have one trade ship. So we're going to send them to, actually we're going to keep them right here for now. We're going to collect in our home node. Doesn't look like uh, the Black Sea Merchant's doing much of anything, but can't really transfer anywhere else. I'll just recall them for now. We're going to ally back the... I like back Trebizond. The White Horde starts at war with the Chupanids. They start with the Chupanids capital occupied, so they pretty much always win this. But for some reason, something happens where the Chupanids break out of the uh, personal union. We're going to have to go very slow and... Uh, Try to pick off countries as they get into trouble, especially the uh, White Horde. I think once the White Horde starts imploding, we could get uh, some territory up here and get a vassal. Probably make them a march, just keep them there forever. 
probably also pick off these. I'm a little hesitant to take provinces north of the provinces that I own because it's mountains, so I don't imagine these provinces are going to be very worthwhile to take because, first of all, they're poor right now and they're in mountains, so the communication efficiency is going to be really bad. The thing is, I was looking, there's... Where's the terrain map mode? This whole area is just mountains. Like, these are all mountains right here. If there's not mountains, there's hills. These are all hills. Or if it's not hills, there's highlands. If there's not hills, highlands, mountains, there's dense forest. This whole area right here just kind of sucks. There's a lot of uh, rugged terrain that we're going to have to uh, build roads through to get that communication efficiency down. Once you get down here and over here, it's a little bit better. So I'm thinking we might move our capital somewhere else. I think I can only have one alliance. So I will dump Circassia to ally the Empire of the Romans if they accept. They don't like my navy strength. Or the distance between borders and neutral attitude right now. Can't attack anybody for another year. What is this? Ah, corruption. guys have embraced legalism. I'm going to also try to, down the road, ally the Mamluks before I start uh, looting the Mamluks, so I'm going to improve relations with them. If the Ottomans get powerful, then I should be able to rival them, and then I can use the Mamluks to attack the Ottomans. Then once the Ottomans are uh, defeated, then I can move on the Mamluks. Really enough, the White Horde, they start with a massive amount of troops. I imagine it's all tribal levies because they have a lot of, uh, they have a lot of territory and that's a lot of tribal territory. So they give a lot. Let's see, we can ally Chupanids, Retinids, Genoa, Jalarids, or Shirvan. Let's go ahead and start building a spy network on Shirvan. We'll rival them. They're just allied with this country up here, Simsir. I think Shirvan is a nice target. After we take these cores back, then we could probably move on Shirvan. Trebizond has a level 3 fort, so I don't want to attack them yet. Granted, uh, Shirvan has a level 3 fort as well. Trebizond is just allied with uh, Ossetia. So they're a potential target as well. Let's 
let's go ahead and send our men there and reduce maintenance a little bit. We can't protect trade in the Caucasus, so go ahead and reduce fleet maintenance. Right? Yeah, okay, because it's inland. Alright, just making sure. The White Horde is moving a massive amount of troops. Good luck, Chupanids. Mazandran. Donate 30 ducats. Donate 30 ducats to me. I'll take 30 ducats. I don't think there's another nation we can form. It's alright because we don't need to form another nation. We're already the best nation in the world, Georgia. Yeah, the uh, Chupanids didn't stand a chance. The White Horde has announced Georgia as their rival. Please don't. I think what happens is the White Horde ruler dies. And then the Chupanids break free. Oh, no, okay, so that, yeah, I don't really understand what goes on there. Uh, so the White Horde, maybe the White Horde breaks it. The White Horde is automatically in that war, and then they win the war, so they get the uh, personal union, and then they just immediately break it. But it's good for me because it wipes away the Chupanids' vassals, so, although these guys were either Chupanids or White Horde, I'm not sure. Either way, they're not... Uh, they're not vassals anymore, so I could attack them now. So I think that's what I'll do. I can move against these guys now, but I'll do that in the next part. For now, I'm going to end this part here and pick it up then. So uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you then. Goodbye.